I just got booked on my first Nashville honky tonk set on Lower Broadway. I have four hours of songs I need to perform and I have no idea what's going to be called. What do I do next? What songs do you need to know? This is a question I'm frequently asked by new musicians in town and even experienced musicians who are coming into town to play some shows. Case in point, my friend from Minneapolis, Katie Hart, the vocalist, she messaged me last night saying she booked some gigs here and she's doing some work on Nashville's Lower Broadway and she wants to be prepared for any and everything. So what do you do? So if you're a new musician, an established musician, if you've been in Nashville a while, you're brand new to Nashville, regardless of the instrument, your experience, here's five essential tips to help you know every song and be prepared for a Nashville honky-tonk set. So my number one piece of advice, cast a wide net. Prepare yourself with a wide net of repertoire. And I like to do this using something I call the SAD method. I think of styles, artists, and decades. I think about hallmarks around those, and I go from there. If I'm thinking about 90s country, do I need to learn every 90s country artist? No. I'm going to focus on the landmark artists from that decade. Shania Twain, Kenny Chesney, Tim McGraw. Do I learn every song from them? No. I'll learn maybe a handful, one or two, depending on how popular they are. And that's a good starting point. And I go through each decade for a style and think, all right, who are the artists? Let me learn a couple songs from them. I also think about styles. What styles are you unfamiliar with? Now, we're all familiar with our specialty styles, but for example, for me, I did not know country when I moved to Nashville. So I had to learn a lot of different country artists from a lot of different eras and decades. Did I learn every country song? No. It's impossible. But I focused on the really important one, the landmark ones. Things like Johnny Cash, Merle Haggard, Loretta Lynn, Dolly. So find the landmark artists from the style that you're unfamiliar with or unsure of and prepare with that. My number two tip, have a master song list that you have memorized and that you can pull out of your pocket at any time. I would say make it about 20, 20 songs or so. These aren't your 20 best songs. These are your 20 widest variety of songs. So think about that sad method. Think about styles, artists, decades. Think about what's the widest amount of ground you can cover with about 20 to 30 songs. Again, this isn't an end all be all, but this is having a really good base to draw from. Memorize those 20 to 30 songs and you're in a good spot. Number three, be prepared to pivot. And here's what I mean by pivoting. Let's say someone comes up and requests Let's say you're a country singer and they request a rock song from the 90s. Let's say they request a Pearl Jam song. You don't know any Pearl Jam. But if you've done your homework and thinking about styles, thinking about decades and artists, all right, well, Pearl Jam is a 90s artist in rock. So who else is from that decade in that style? Maybe grunge rock. 90s grunge rock. Who do you think of? I think of Nirvana. So if somebody suggests something, you say, well, maybe you can't play that song, but you can play something close to it. Is it a perfect solution? No, but you can't be prepared for everything. But having a wide base to draw from allows you to pivot one or two steps away instead of reaching for 40 steps away. And in that same breath, let's think about number four. Audience members and fellow musicians on the bandstand are like dogs and bees. They can smell fear. They can smell if you're hesitating and hmm and hawing about something. So how do you fix that? Well, everyone's going to have a little bit different role based on who they are. But like I said, be prepared to pivot and suggest something to like another band member on stage. If they say, hey, can you play the song? You say, how about we play this? So if they ask to play, you know, a Waylon Jennings song and you offer to play maybe a Merle Haggard song instead or vice versa, sometimes that's a much easier compromise 
than somebody asking to play Willie Nelson and then you requesting Green Day. Likewise with audience members. Sometimes you have audience members coming up and asking you for something random. And you don't know it or you're not prepared for it. Be prepared to pivot and do not show that fear. So for example, Katie, she's a singer. She can say, oh, good so that is, that is a fantastic request you just put in. I do declare, but if I ask the fellow musicians here on this stage to play that song, I'm afraid they would skin me like a cat. That is the most fortuitous challenge you are laying down. How about we play this song instead for you? Thank you so much for your kindness and generosity in supporting the Nashville musician scene. Can we give this gentleman a hand? Oh. So I'm not sure why I turned into Scarlett O'Hare from Gone with the Wind right now. But just doing a little bit of a pivot and also improv -ing. And I kid you not, taking an improv class worth its weight in gold for any front person. And I am being absolutely dead serious. Think about that three to five seconds when you're like, uh, oh, I don't know what to do. Someone's asking me something I don't know and I'm uncomfortable. How do you handle that? And most people think about gravitas on the mic, comfort as a natural ability, an innate skill. And for some people it is, but it's not something that you can't learn. So if you take an improv class, you might feel foolish and you might be hanging out with a bunch of improv comedy dorks, but I guarantee you that those skills you develop there, where you say yes and, or instead of saying, sorry, we don't know that tune, you say, thank you for making that request. We're going to play this song that's in that era and style to make you happy. Thank you so much for supporting us. Like learning little things like that pay huge dividends. And my fifth and final tip, have a device on stage. So have a phone, have an iPad. Why? Because one of those, you might get called to do a song that you don't know, but you think you might be able to pull off. Or maybe everyone else in the band knows it and you don't. So there's a couple things you can do. You can pull up a quick recording of that song, listen to it. You can, maybe you have a chart for it and you pull up the chords or maybe you have the lyrics and you pull up the lyrics. So have a device and everyone has different tools they need to use. I like using a metronome. I also use Fourscore for my charts. Some people use a guitar app. Some people have lyric folders. Um, I also recommend having one of these. So we have a little clip here that attaches to a mic stand and you can clip that on and be prepared with your device. Now here's one little tip about that device. Make sure you have certain files stored offline. And here's what I mean. Because some spots on Broadway, there's going to be dead zones and you may not have access to your data. Sometimes there's so many people down there that the network is slow and does not respond. And that three to five seconds means a lot. So whatever you use for charts, lyrics, chords, Try to have a folder or a file or an app where you downloaded all of those. For example, I use Fourscore. There's a lot of other apps you can use out there. Also download a master song list on your Spotify. Have it stored locally on your device. Really beneficial for a couple reasons. One, you don't have to use data to, to stream it. And so you don't have to rely on a network connection. But two, if you're a vocalist, a lot of these songs on Spotify will have a karaoke version or like the lyrics attached to that song. You just need to activate it. So there's my five tips for being able to know a wide amount of songs in Nashville and being prepared for it on your first honky tonk shift. There's nothing that substitutes real world experience and just getting in there and doing it. Be prepared to sometimes go in these situations and it might be a little bit intimidating, but you can prepare yourself. I also recommend watching some live streams. I have some live streams that I do on my uh, YouTube channel where you can see me playing the music for four hours. You can go to, I believe AJ's Good Time Bar has, they live stream every day. 
I believe Nudies does that as well. And that will give you an idea of some of the songs that are being called, some of the repertoire. So that will help you prepare, and there's nothing that substitutes real world experience. So I hope you enjoy that. And coming up, I'm going to start having some classes here on how to prepare for these sets, how to get out a song list, what songs you need to have. And keep your eyes peeled for that, and also Feel free to tune to my live chat, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, every Sunday. And if you like what I'm doing here, please follow, subscribe. If you'd like to commission a video, simply click on the PayPal or Venmo link at the end of one of these videos, or you can simply support the channel by making a donation. Thanks so much. Looking forward to seeing you on some shifts here on Broadway.